Hey guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different than the videos I've been making. I ain't done any electrical videos for a while, so I thought it would be a time to do something electrical related. And this video is serving two purposes. First of all, it's explaining the uh, purpose of the neutral conductor on a uh, 220 circuit. It's also explaining the uh, signs and symptoms of a lost neutral on 220 circuits. The green wire is serving as the neutral or ground. Then you got one leg of the 220 here and one leg here represented by the black and the red wires. And the way 220 works is it's actually two 120 circuits split but out of phase with each other. And before I go any further, as you've seen on the first uh, thing on the, in the intro of the video, you don't want to do this yourself because I'm just doing a demonstration. It's easy to get shocked and, and or electrocuted doing this. This is just for demonstration purposes. So now if you look at the voltmeter, I got it set on AC power. If you read from here to here, I'm getting 120. And from here to here, I'm getting 120. And you go across the red and the black, you pick up 240. Everybody calls it 220, it's actually 240. But So you get two 120 circuits adding together to get 240 but you never have 240 volts to ground. So you can stick this in the ground and you're not going to pick up 240. You only going to get 120 volts to ground. You only get 240 across the two phases like this. Okay, so now I got a basic circuit set up here with two 100 watt, 120 volt light bulbs. These are your standard incandescent bulbs, and I'm just using these because they put more of a load on the circuit. You're looking at approximately 0.8 amps per bulb on this. Okay, so now there ain't nothing special going on. Uh, you got 120 volts across each bulb. You can see the meter here, which is going to be the, the same reading as we did earlier. You see they were picking up 121 volts, which is the same, which I'm reading in parallel with that bulb. Now we go over here, I'm getting 121 here off of that bulb. Now across the outside legs, I'm getting to 244. So now, since this is a balanced circuit, the neutral actually isn't doing anything. You can see now both bulbs are hooked in series to the 220. And there should be close to zero volts difference between these two. We're looking at 0 0.6 difference. Okay, so now, in a perfect world, this, you wouldn't need the neutral conductor on a 220 circuit. But, pretend that this is, the two light bulbs represent a heating element in, say, electric furnace. You also have, usually the blower motor runs off 120. So let's hook up a third light bulb to simulate the motor. Since the, our motor in this example is another light bulb, it's going to be a 120 volt motor, which is very common. So now these two bulbs are hooked in parallel. And this one's hooked in the other in the other leg. We'll go ahead and hook the ground back, the neutral back. Now we'll turn it back on. 
As you see, all three bulbs are lit up. Okay, so right now these two bulbs are in parallel, and this one's running off the other side of the 220. So, let's disconnect the neutral and you'll get an idea of what it's actually doing. So now you're getting, now these two bulbs got dim and this one got brighter. You can kind of get an idea of what the neutrals are doing, because this is now an unbalanced circuit. You get two bulbs on one side of the 220 and one bulb on the other. So now we'll take the meter and read across this bulb. You see we're picking up 171, and you read across the other one, picking up 72. So your 220 is being split, it's being divided. This is a good example of a voltage divider. So now you can kind of see with the, with the neutral connected, it serves as a balancer. It balances the load on the two ball, on all the whole circuit. So like I was saying, you can pretend that two of these bulbs is a heater in a furnace and the other bulb is a, a, a motor. And without the neutral conductor, your load's unbalanced. So in order to maintain constant voltage, no matter what load is connected, you have to have a neutral to balance everything. And for curiosity, you can see that between the middle and the ground, you're picking up 49 volts. So there's 49 volts difference here. And this is the same thing if you ever heard of a lost neutral, like on a house wiring or something. This is what will happen to your appliances in your house. Like this is seeing 171 volts and these are seeing 70. So if this is a, a computer or something other sense, or a TV or something, other sensitive electronic device, it's going to be burning up right now. This incandescent bulb will take a little bit extra voltage in 120. That's one of the reasons it's tolerating it. But if you ever hear the term lost neutral, this is a good example of it because your neutral is broke right now. Either a wire is melted into or a terminal is corroded or something like that. And it's, it makes it extremely dangerous too. Because now, say this neutral is your uh, your third prong in your house, so now you get 49 volts potential to ground. So if you walk up and touch this, you're getting shocked with 49 volts. Whereas now, you connect this to ground, you know, you're picking up zero volts potential to ground because this is the ground, everything's connected to each other. Well guys, I guess that's about it. I've been wanting to do a video on this for a long time and a lot of people like the electrical theory videos like this. And I figured this would be a good little interesting video to make. So if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.